So we've uh, seen the hour of 8.30. Good morning. I'll call this informational hearing to order. This meeting will be held in accordance with House Rule 10.01. Mr. Smith, roll call, please. Chair Sunday. Here. Present. Vice Chair Vang. Rep. Vang. Present. Representative Anderson. Anderson present. Present Representative Burkle. Burkle present. Burkle present. Representative Eklund, excused. Present. Representative Hansen R. Hansen R. Representative Hansen J. Let's see, she's on two. Representative Cleborn. Cleborn present. Cleborn present. Representative Lippert. Present. Lipper present. Representative Lewick. Lewick present. Lewick present. Representative Miller. Miller present. Miller present. Representative Nelson. Nelson present. Nelson present. Representative Thompson. Thompson present. Thompson present. We have quorum, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Smith. Uh, before we get going on the agenda, I'd just like to uh, make certain that uh, the Committee is aware that uh, of my gratitude for the staff that's uh, weighed in on this. Uh, not only Mr. Smith and uh, uh, Nancy Connolly, um, but um, all the uh, governor's staff, the uh, department staff that uh, has helped out with this bill. And uh, uh, if you ever get a chance, personally thank them for their work. So uh, this is an overview. So uh, as a reminder, the House and Senate Conference Committee on Senate File 958 wrapped up at the end of the session and has been signed into law, but it just included language items that uh, we agreed to. So most of the language items uh, were included in that bill. Senator Westrom and I and the administration continued to work on the budget over the past weeks, seeking input from others as appropriate. Before you, you today, as a result of uh, those discussions, a chair's agreement that we hope each body will fully support. Like any conference committee agreement, this chair's agreement rep represents a compromise reached through give and take. Both sides took provisions that weren't, were, they weren't particularly wild about and uh, didn't get everything they wanted either. So. Uh, both sides move to reach this compromise. There's some disappointments that some house positions uh, didn't make it through, like market bucks, the provisions on treated seeds, and climate smart farms. We fought hard for these, but it takes both sides to agree to put something in. And unfortunately, these were left by the wayside. Overall, this is a really good bill. Uh, firstly, it honors a commitment to the basics of what needs to be done through the Department, the Board of Animal Health, and the Agriculture Utilization Research Institute. It invests in opportunities to develop new markets. It supports continuing efforts that help address climate change and soil health and water quality. And it also looks to the future to ensure that we have a rich and growing diversity of farmers equipped to contribute to our communities and economy. As noted before, this is an informational hearing. No votes will be taken. We don't have uh, possession of the bill. The purpose of this hearing is for members and the public to learn about what is in the agreement. So by the time the bill is voted on, we are fully informed. The public had the opportunity to submit written testimony until Sunday the 13th, 2021 at 5 p.m. It was posted on the committee website. The bill will be heard in ways and means this afternoon. With that, we can begin with a walkthrough of the um, Senate uh, House Senate Chair Agreement. So, um, Mr. Savory, would you uh, uh, again introduce yourself and proceed with a walkthrough of the Chair's Agreement? Uh, Mr. Chair and members, for the record, Ken Savory, uh, House Fiscal Staff. And I believe Ms. Connolly is going to pull up the language and we can walk through the language kind of uh, piece by piece. So 
So chair and members, just starting briefly, you'll see the um, total appropriations for the Department of Agriculture, um, just on lines 1.24 1, 1 and then moving downwards to 2.3 and then the standard appropriation from the remediation fund for the voluntary cleanup program on 2.4. And then we'll start with our first division, which is on subdivision two. Um, you'll see appropriations on 2.11 and 2.12. The appropriation from the general fund on 2.11 is $19,384,000. And then in FY23, $19,610,000. Um, the first rider um, is on 2.17 from the general fund. That's $175,000 a year for the crippled livestock or the wolf depredation funding. Um, this funding remains unchanged and includes on line 2.26, the $5,000 designation for the university extension um, to confirm uh, animals that were crippled or destroyed. And then moving down onto the moving down further, the next item is on line 3.1, which is $155,000 a year for the elk depredation or crop damage appropriation. That appropriation remains unchanged. And then on line 3.7 um, is an additional designation that the commissioner may use up to $10,000. Um, to reimburse expenses incurred by the commissioner or commissioner's agent um, to resolve claims. And then additionally on line 3.13, you'll see additional language um, of $20,000 to make grants for producers for measures to protect stored crops. And so we'll move down a little further and we'll see some of the changes that were in the chair's agreement beginning on line 3.23. And that's $225,000 each year for the noxious weed um, program. And you'll see on line 3.24, you'll see the term additional funding. And many of these riders and protection services use the term additional funding to describe the increase for a particular appropriation. So this is the $225,000 increase each year for the noxious weed program. And then on line 3.26, you'll see $50,000 for the industrial hemp program, a one-time appropriation. The funding is available till June 30th, 2023. And on line 3.31, this is $110,000 each year for additional meat and poultry inspection services. This also receives an $110,000 federal match um, as is designated on the spreadsheet. And so moving down a little further, we'll see on line 4.3, this rider is slightly different in that this rider uses the existing rider that was in the 2019 on um, the Ag Bill. So the increase for um, capital lab equipment is $600,000 over the fiscal year. The original rider said $225,000. So $225,000 plus the additional six hundred dollars gets you to the $825,000 uh, per year for the um, MDA lab. And then on line 4.7, You'll see a couple, uh, several of these riders throughout the um, throughout the bill, which designate the administrative increase for the department. So in this case, for this division, it's two hundred seventy-four thousand dollars in the first year, and then five hundred fifty thousand dollars in the second year. And so that concludes the protection services division. We can move on now to ag marketing development. You'll see the overall appropriations on line four point one one. The first rider is on 4.12, which is $186,000 each fiscal year for Minnesota Grown. This is unchanged from the prior um, appropriation. So moving down a little further to line 4.22 is $50,000 in the first year to expand for international marketing. Um, and this specifies that the one-time appropriation available till June 30th, 2023. And then on line 4.28, you'll see $634,000 a year for continuation of the dairy, dairy development and prof, profitability enhancement. And at the end of the bill, you'll see some of um, this language that is now in statute. And we'll go over that when we get to the end of the bill. 
line 5.1 is $50,000 in each year for additional funding for um, mental health outreach and support to farmers. And these are one-time appropriations. Then on line 5.17 is $100,000 in each fiscal year for farm safety grants. And these are one-time appropriations as well. And then on line 5.22, you'll see another administrative increase specifically for, specifically for this division of $54,000 in the first year and $109,000 in the second year. And so we'll move, that concludes that division. We'll move on to Ag Bioenergy and Bioproc Advancement um, where Agri and Agri currently are. And on 5.27, you'll see 9.3 million each fiscal year for Agri to and that is the appropriation that was in 2019, so that is unchanged. And then moving through the bill, you'll see the previous riders that the House carried um, for the agreed area. I won't go over those just because those are unchanged as well. So we'll proceed through that all language that was in the House bill. And then we'll see um, some new language on line 6.22 regarding some reporting for potato breeders and wild rice, referring to the chairs, um, an update of the status of the research and the related accomplishments for that research um, for potato breeding and wild rice. And so the new changes for agri start on line uh, 7.3. So the new appropriation for Agri is $16,028,000 in each fiscal year. And we'll kind of move down, we'll see some of the up to language carve outs or up to language. So on 7.15, this is $800,000 for um, farm to school. This is, an, this is a, a doubling of what it was of $400,000 in the previous bill. And this was, the, this was the amount the house carried. And then we'll see, on line 7.25, uh, $600,000 for urban and youth agriculture. This was an increase from $300,000 a year. And then we'll see on line 7.28 of that amount, um, 10,000 each year will be transferred to the emerging farmer account under Minnesota statutes and the references there. And we'll see at the end of the bill, the establishment of the emerging farmer account in statute um, later um, in, in the bill. And then we'll see on line 7.32, this is an increase for the Good Food Access Program. The up to language now specifies that $450,000 each year can be used for Good Food Access. And that is an increase of $150,000 um, each year for Good Food Access over the previous language. And then moving down more, we'll see on line 8.17, the Agri appropriation maintains the million dollar designation for um, Ag Societies and County Fairs. And then we'll see on line 8.21, which is um, $4.5 million each year for the incentive payments program. And that is a $1.5 million increase over the previous rider language. So it went from 3 million to uh, 4.5, so $1.5 million increase increase there. And then on line 8.34, we'll see $3 million each year for um, petroleum dispensers, fuel storage tanks, and our equipment to dispose of biofuels. So this is the um, biofuels infrastructure appropriation that the governor carried and the house carried. The primary difference is that um, the house bill had this outside of agri, so a separate appropriation, but we'll, in the chairs agreement, this is now contained within the agri program. So it's now a carve out of the larger agri appropriation. So on the spreadsheet, you see brackets designating $3 million each fiscal year for the biofuels infrastructure program. And then we'll see larger language regarding the biofuels infrastructure program, um, specifying the uses and then We'll see on line 9.17, um, a specifying that a grant award must not exceed $200,000 per um, fuel station. And 
And then we'll see um, reporting language on line 9.30. And then, let's see here, regarding a report back to the committees of the progress of the infrastructure program. Then on line 10.5, you'll see a $750,000 for $750,000 for the um, livestock processing um, within the agri program. And these are one-time designations. And this was paid for with general fund cash from the target. And then on line 10.16, you'll see $1.4 million each fiscal year for um, livestock investment grants. And then both this appropriation and the one I previously spoke to on line 10.19 um, has language that any un unencumbered balance at the end of the year does not cancel and may be used for other purposes in this paragraph. And again, this is a one-time appropriation for livestock investment grants. And then on line 10.32, um, you'll see resetting the base for the Agri program at $16,553,000 um, in 24 and 25. That recognizes an increase in the tails. And then you'll see statutory references on line 10.0, excuse me, 11.1 .1 to 11.3 regarding the siting and center program. And then finally, regarding this section, you'll see on line 11.4 to 11.6, $15,000 increase for um, administration and then $29,000 increase in the second year for maintaining current level of service. So that concludes the agri and agreed um, program sections. And then we'll move on to subdivision five, which is admin and financial assistance. You'll see the appropriations for the section on line 11.8. And we'll start on 11.9, uh, which is the $474,000 a year for um, county ag societies. Um, this is unchanged. We'll move down to line 11.19, which is an increase to the farm advocates, uh, farm advocate service. And so the new appropriation is $387,000 the first year and $337,000 the second year. And of this amount, 100,000 in the first year and 50,000 the second year are for creating farmland access teams um, for potential beginning farmers. And then of that amount, $50,000 is for, I'm trying to find the reference here, $50,000 second year for a pallet program creating farmland access teams. And then on line 11.33 is $50,000 may be used to upgrade the Minnesota FarmLink web application. That was a previous change item that is now underneath the Farm Advocates program or appropriation. And then on line 12.3 is um, some of the pass-through grants, this one being $47,000 each fiscal year for the Northern Crop Institute. Then on line 12.7, this is the $238,000 a year for um, mental health services at Minnesota State Colleges. And then line 12.16 represents a $50,000 increase for farm to food, or excuse me, um, Second Harvest Heartland, which is now $1.7 million in each fiscal year. And it's a base appropriation or a base increase. And then there's language um, designating how the funds uh, should be used. And then on line 14.12 is $250,000 for um, Minnesota Ag Education Leadership Council or MALC that remains unchanged. And then on line 14.17 is $1,437,000 to be transferred to the relevant loan account for the Ag BMP program. And then that appropriation changes slightly in the tails as designated by line 14.25 to 14, or excuse me, 1,425,000. And then you will see um, language uh, starting on line 14.26 for the department to do a study on or using one third of the amount um, to award grants to rural landowners to replace septic systems 
um, that can adequately provide groundwater. And then on further down the paragraph, you'll see um, the requirement for the department to report back to the legislature regarding that regarding that um, regarding that work. Now, line 15.5. This is the $150,000 appropriation each year for the Center for Rural Policy and Development. That's a one-time appropriation. Down line 15.9 is $150,000 in the first year to Central Lakes College, um, building and offering credentials in the area of meat cutting and butchery. Uh, this was a Senate provision that the House accepted. And then further on down the paragraph, you'll see that um, language on 15.18 for, uh, excuse me, 15.21, the commissioner must seek matching dollars from Minnesota State Colleges and Universities and that this must be matched from another funding source in order for the grant to proceed forward. And if, those, and if this money cannot be spent, you'll see on line um, 15.25 that the remaining amount must be transferred to AGRI um, for AGRI purposes. You'll see on line 16.12, which is $2,000 each fiscal year, um, for the Minnesota Poultry Association, this is slightly different than the rider typically has been in the past, which moves all the funding to the first year, um, but makes the funding also available in the second year. Then line 16.19, $17,000 in each fiscal year to the Minnesota Horticultural Society, and this is a one-time appropriation. Then on 16.23, $18,000 each fiscal year to the Livestock Breeders Association, um, another one-time appropriation. Then on line 16.31, $25,000 in the first year, or in each, in each fiscal year for the Southern Minnesota Initiative Foundation. On 17.5, $75,000 in each year to Greater Mankato Growth or Green Seam, uh, one-time appropriation. On 17.11, uh, $75,000 in each fiscal year to the Turf Seed Council. On line 17.27, um, $150,000 in each fiscal year to establish um, an emerging farmer, farmer office at the department and then hire a full-time um, outreach coordinator. And then specifically on line 18.2 of the amount appropriated for the $150,000, uh, $25,000 is for translation services for farmers and cottage food producers. And then on line 18.6, $222,000 in the first year and $286,000 in the second year to maintain the current service level. And that wraps up the Department of Agriculture, and we have a few more items left, um, starting with the Board of Animal Health on line 18.9. You'll see the appropriations, um, total appropriations for the Board of Animal Health and the general fund. And then on line 18.10, this is a previous rider designating $200,000 for ag emergency and preparedness. And on line 18.13, you'll see $103,000 in the first year, $204,000 in the second year, um, for the administrative increase, maintaining current service levels for um, the Board of Animal Health. And on line 18.6 and 18.7, we'll start with the AURI. You'll see the general fund appropriation total on line 18.17. Then on line 18.18, you'll see $150,000 each fiscal year for the meat scientists. This is the house provision um, going into conference. And then line 18.20, um, you'll see $500,000 only in the first year for the for the mobile slaughter unit. So mobile slaughter unit. This was a Senate provision that was taken in the conference, which the House accepted. And then moving down, you'll see um, similar language to what was in the previous um, meat cutting um, appropriation for Central Lakes College. Um, regarding um, matching funding and seeking um, funding for matching dollars from Minnesota State Colleges and Universities, and that's on line 19.2 to 19.6. And then again, you'll see similar language on 19.8 with 
the fact that any remaining money um, as of June 30th, 2024, will be transferred to the um, Agri program for Agri purposes. And then that concludes the appropriations of the bill. There's some language left regarding on 19.223 that establishes the emerging farmer account for the $10,000 to be transferred in um, out of the um, urban and youth ag appropriation within Agri. And then you'll see on line 19.28, this is the statutory um, dairy development and profitability enhancement language that was um, taken from the rider and now included in the statute. <laughs> and then finally, um, line 20.31, these were cancellations which the House carried in the conference, um, totaling $1,330,000 which are then carried forward. So um, allows the, the department to have a little more of a larger appropriation um, in the current by an upcoming biennium. And then finally on 12 point, or sorry, 21.12, um, these are the appropriations for the um, deed office of broadband. And as you'll see on line 21.27, this is um, just the base for the, um, just the base for the office. This doesn't include any additional funding uh, for grants. Um, for that purpose. So just establishing the base and maintaining the base appropriation. And chair and members, I believe that wraps up the language. I would um, offer if Mr. Sullivan has any comments on things I missed or didn't um, quite clarify, but I think that should um, wrap up the appropriations. Thank you, Mr. Savory. Um, Mr. Sullivan, do you have anything to add? Mr. Chair and members, I, I don't have anything to add, but I'm happy to help uh, Mr. Savory, answer questions. Okay, terrific. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, are there any technical questions for uh, Mr. Sullivan or Mr. Savory? Okay, uh, Representative Anderson, please. Thanks, Mr. Chair, and thanks for that uh, report, Mr. Savory. Uh, just curious. I'm very glad to see money in the in the bill for E15 infrastructure. But uh, wishing could have been taken out of the general fund, not out of agri. So my question to you is how much of the agri fund is earmarked now by the legislature? Either Mr. Savory or uh, whoever can answer that question. Mr. Savory? Yeah, uh, Mr. Chair and members, in the, in, the, in the larger spreadsheet that was included in your packet, um, there's a line that lays out the designated expended, excuse me, the designated spending for agri. So for example, um, in total, the, in FY22-23, the entire agri appropriation is $32 million, is $32 million, uh, $56,000, but $56,000. And of that amount, um, $21,300,000 is, is designated spending. So that is, that would include the, County fairs, bio incentive payments, um, biofuels infrastructure, uh, livestock processing, and the livestock investment grants. Thank you, Representative Anderson. Yeah, just a couple more questions, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, it seemed like uh, a lot of the the language in the bill that talked for additional funding to maintain services was was higher. In some cases, double the amount in the second year. Why is that second year so much higher than the first year of the biennium? <laughs> Mr. Savory? Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair and members, I think that would probably be better answered by the department. I understand Commissioner Peterson is available and staff would like to take that one. Can you, sorry, can you restate the question? I, I didn't quite understand the uh, gist of it. Yeah, Mr. Kushner, in the bill language, in, in several instances, when it talks about funding to maintain the current level of service, the the second year is 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 much higher. In some cases, about double than the first year. Just wondering why the, the the big difference from year to year in that uh, continued funding for the department. Commissioner Peterson. 
Mr. Chairman uh, and members of, by the way, uh, Tom Peterson, uh, Commissioner of Agriculture, I believe you're talking maybe about our operating adjustments, and I might see if our Deputy Commissioner Andrea Bobble wants to address that, uh, perhaps. Commissioner Bobble. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you. Um, Andrea Vavil, Deputy Commissioner, Department of Agriculture. Um, I will verify with our CFO, um, Representative Anderson. I think what um, usually ends up happening is it's the um, uh, just the what we're um, anticipating in terms of just uh, resources that we'll need for um, staff that are staying on um, that, you know, is, is uh, um, <clears throat> they continue on or I'm sorry if they have. Um, <laughs> If they have, um, uh, if they've been around longer in terms of staff, um, you know, we're anticipating if we need additional rent, um, you know, it's just sort of the, um, you know, the, the cost of, of uh, living adjustments that go into that. But I'll, I'll verify with our, with our uh, CFO, but um, they, they do a lot of analysis on that to, to make sure that we can maintain service level. <clears throat> Representative Anderson, any further? Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chair and Representative Commissioner Bobble. Uh, just if we could touch off online or something about some of those those numbers. And just one final question in the language about the, the mobile livestock slaughtering unit. Uh, I believe the language says the money's going to go to, quote, organizations. Um, and that seems to be kind of uh, open-ended. What type of organizations <laughs> would be be looked at to receive funding for this mobile unit? That's the money that will be uh, passed through our, uh, uh, Commissioner Bobble, you want to take that one? Who would like that one? Sure, sure I can take a stab at it. And then, um, Commissioner Peterson, if I, if you want to, um, step in. Yeah. So my understanding is that the funding will go, um, from us, Department of Agriculture to AURI, um, and they will do a uh, request for proposals, um, to whatever organization, uh, meets the needs that they, they lay out in the request for proposals. So um, it could be, you know, whomever, um, I'm, I'm not sure exactly who will do that, but um, AURI will be running that process. Okay, thank you. Any further, Representative Anderson? Uh, no, thanks, thank Mr. You. Chairman. Thank you. Any other questions for the technical staff? Okay, uh, how about a report uh, from Commissioner Peterson? Any comments on, uh, uh, the process or the uh, the end result here, Mr. Chairman. Uh, no, I just like to uh, um, thank you and the uh, staff and uh, uh, Vice Chair Vang for all of your work on this bill. Um, at the end of the day, I'm very excited um, to uh, get to work on this bill and hope that we uh, get it through the PEP process, have the governor sign it, and then we can get to work on this. You know, when we started this, we had several. Um, different uh, initiatives that we wanted to highlight, including that we wanted to really address. And that was uh, part of our uh, goals of uh, increasing biofuel use. And again, this isn't a mandate. This is uh, building out that infrastructure, which we believe was really important. And then meat processing, something this committee spent a lot of time on, very important piece. And we're very excited about all of the pieces in meat processing, which is going to help all over uh, Minnesota, and, and again, very uh, excited about the piece with um, uh, with Central Lakes or in that area with the with the colleges. I think is a really top priority uh, for um, for the agency. Some other things that I think are really um, you know whether it's trade, um, industrial hemp, uh, are uh, beginning and uh, emerging farmers. Uh, uh, a lot of work in there and just very exciting. Our farm safety grants um, and important pass through dollars to uh, those organizations were all things that we've added uh, to get to. I know one of the concerns the uh, uh, some of the committee members have was on fees. And one of the important pieces on that, the fees are not in here coming back, but we were able to fund uh, at a higher level and replace some of our lab. Uh, equipment, which is uh, incredibly important for the work we do for Minnesota's farmers, whether that's um, doing um, uh, pesticide uh, 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 examinations and complaints, uh, drift complaints, um, but also uh, important trade uh, verifications and pieces of that. You know, the legislature invested $20 million uh, last year in our lab. And so 
Um, we have a world-class lab and we need world-class equipment in that lab. And so this bill uh, uh, invests in that too as well. And so um, I just want to thank everybody for their work on it. I think it's a, a very strong bill um, that addresses all sectors of agriculture for Minnesota. I will say the, uh, the you know, I am uh, disappointed in the market buck piece. Uh, you know, I don't think that coming out of the house, we saw that as being uh, something that was in peril as much as it was. And we'll have to continue to work on that as we move forward, because I do think it's an important piece. I visited uh, farmers markets this weekend and talked with farmers um, and know the importance of that program and also the federal dollars that it leverages. And so um, that is a disappointment, but it's not something that I'm going to stop working on at all. Um, we'll continue to look forward. But at the end of the day, with uh, divided government, uh, this bill um, has a lot of excellent things in it for uh, uh, Minnesota farmers and Minnesotans in general. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the opportunity to comment and to uh, uh, work with you uh, and your staff on this uh, bill. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Peterson. Uh I had some closing comments of my own, but you, know, you pretty much covered it. Thank you very much. But uh, uh, we can open this up for discussion uh, from the committee. If anyone has a, a word to share, please do so now. Uh, Representative Cleburne. Thank you, Mr. Chair and committee members. I just want to say thank you um, for the hard work that you've put in um, on this bill and to our staff and um, to Vice Chair Bang. I know it was a, a really tough negotiation, and I just want to echo the words of Commissioner Peterson. I am extremely disappointed about the market bucks, and I hope that we can continue to work on that and make sure that that becomes a reality. Um, thank you again for your hard work, and that's my comment. Great. Any other comments? I'm glad you touched on uh, the participation from uh, Vice Chair Vang. She was uh, invaluable um, throughout the process and uh, I think I've gained a new friend in the legislature. She's, she was uh, terrific to work with. Uh, any other comments? Okay, hearing none, uh, we're adjourned. Thank you. And- uh, uh, Rep Chair Sundin. Oh, oh, excuse me, uh, Representative Anderson, please. Well, thanks, thanks again, Mr. Chair. Just uh, one final comment and a question. I just wanna say thanks to the department for the work they've done on uh, invasive species and especially in regard to uh, Palmer amaranth. Um, other states are uh, have their hands full with uh, that, uh, that weed spreading, but here in Minnesota, not on wood so far, you've done, I think, an excellent job in uh, locating areas where the weed has, has come up and is growing and you've eradicated it. And I just wanna say thank you for that uh, job well done to the department, that Commissioner Peterson and your staff. Just one final question, if I could. As I recall, I think the funding was cut from the original house position on, on having some uh, some staffing overseas, I think in the Far East in, in terms of marketing. I think it's uh, now down to $50,000. I don't think that would allow you to hire anybody. Um, what do you have in mind for that kind of funding with the market uh, representation in, in that part of the world? That is a terrific question. Commissioner Peterson, can you... Uh... Uh, answer that. What what do we get for fifty thousand uh, dollars? Well, uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, Representative Anderson, uh, first, thank you uh, for the comments on the noxious weeds and Palmer amaranth. That's a very important part that the House negotiated a higher number from where the Senate was uh, in that bill. And as we uh, continue, we did find Palmer amaranth again um, in Polk County um, here just uh, a month ago, and but we. Are are, have been successful and it has a lot to do with our staff um, our staff work. And so uh, with the trade dollars, we actually are hopeful that we can try uh, and contract an office in uh, South, Southeast Asia. Um, we're actually offered free space in different buildings um, and it's about having a presence there. So we'll work with our trade office and our uh, farm and commodity groups and companies um, to see if we can leverage uh, it's kind of our hope as uh, the as the world opens up and uh, uh, in-person visits become more and more important, uh, we have an opportunity um, to do something there. And we do think that uh, we're hopeful that we can use that money to leverage, continue to min um, make Minnesota a top uh, 
uh, trader in that Southeast market. You know, Minnesota has a, not just a abundant crop, although we need rain desperately, um, we have a high quality crop that the um, Asian market really likes. And so um, we are hopeful that that small amount of money of 50,000, you know, um, is a lot of money, but it's a smaller amount um, that we will be able to leverage other dollars um, and uh, take uh, opportunity um, that we have been given and, and uh, make that go forward. And so appreciate the question on that. And, and uh, uh, trade is uh, extremely important here. Commissioner, any other questions, comments? Okay, hearing none, uh, we're adjourned. Thank you for your time, committee. We are adjourned. <laughs>